and gentlemen, here he is, world-renowned, galactically famous, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. L.A. a pretty easy day for you today. Um, we're not doing anything new. We're just going to practice and review the thing that we talked about yesterday with completing the square. Uh, so I'm going to go over one of each of the types of problems that are on the worksheet that you should have and then we'll do some practice with it after that and, and I'll go over that here in a second. So um, the first uh, four problems that are on here, they say to uh, factor the, the perfect square trinomial and then to do something after that. I don't even know. Um, but we're basically, it's already set up perfectly for you, and so the first four are going to be pretty easy for us. Uh, so as a reminder, where's my marker? There it is. Um, the whole idea here is that if we have exactly what we call the perfect square trinomial, which is like a perfect exact trinomial for when I double bubble, I'll end up with the same thing in both of my bubbles. So for this one, ex for example, we have the plus 18x and the plus 81 so we're looking for two numbers that multiply to be 81, add to be 18, which is 9 and 9. So that's the whole idea behind this entire completing the square thing, is that we're dealing with perfect square trinomials, meaning they give us the exact same factors. The beauty of that is that we can rewrite that as x plus 9 squared. Right. Uh, hopefully we picked up on that last time. And this equals 1, which in this case is also a perfect square, which is nice. Uh, so at that point, once we have it set, set up like that, you can just take the square root of both sides to solve. So the square root of this, square root of this, that side is just going to get rid of my square root, which leaves me with an x plus 9 equals. And then the square root of 1 is just plus or minus 1. And that plus or minus is important. It's really messy, I'm sorry. The, the plus or minus is important because that's what indicates to me that I need to split them into two parts. Right, so you've got the x plus 9 equals 1, and then you've also got the x plus 9 equals negative 1. Those are like my two possibilities. And then you're going to solve both of those by subtracting the 9 from both sides, subtracting 9 from both sides, and I end up with a negative 8 and a negative 10. So um, this, these first four problems that we're doing, it's kind of like the second half of the completing the square. You don't have to worry about um, finding that perfect magical number because it's already there for you. All you have to do is exactly what those directions say. Factor the perfect square pi uh, trinomial so that you can combine it. And then take the square root of both sides. So we're just kind of doing that second half of the problem. Um, the bottom couple are where you have to actually do the entire thing. So I'll go over one of those as well. So number five, for example, um, if you slide down to number five with me, it says x squared minus 6x mi uh, minus 16 equals zero. So now we actually have to do the entire completing the square process because this is not a perfect square trinomial. If I tried to find something that multiplies to be negative 16 and subtracts to be negative 6, it's not going to be the exact same number, so I won't be able to do it. So I need to get rid of this negative 16 and use something better, like this magical number, to make it work. So um, the steps on completing the square, by way of review, this is what we did yesterday. We want to start by getting rid of that negative 16 by moving it to the other side. So I'm just going to, oh, whoa, I'm going to panic and freak out and mess everything up. I could stop this video and redo it, but I'm not going to because that's annoying to me. There we go, okay. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the 16 over by adding it to both sides, like that. Leaves me with x squared minus six x equals 16. So I just kind of moved it over to the other side. Make sure you change the sign when you do that. Um, now I've gotta figure out what's that perfect square number, like what can I put in for the new c value that's gonna let me have the exact same numbers and the way that we talked about doing that yesterday is you take whatever your b value is, which in this case is a negative 6, divide it by 2, square it. 
divided by 2, square it. Divided by 2, square it. That's how we do it. So we take half of negative 6, which is going to be a negative 3. Negative 3. And then you square it. That's sideways. But it works. Negative 3 squared is 9. So that's how you get that magic number. You get the magic number by taking the B value, divide it by 2, and then square whatever it is you get. Um, so in this case, it'll be 9. So I'm going to do the plus 9. I just stick that plus 9 right there. But if I'm going to stick the plus 9 on this side of the equal sign, I also need to stick that plus 9 on the other side of the equal sign as well. Um, so on the other side, I'll have the 16 plus the 9. And then from here, we're doing the same thing that we did on the problems just the problem we just finished, where we can, this would be an x minus 3, x minus 3, which is just x minus 3 quantity squared. 16 plus 9 is 25. Take the square root of both sides, split it into two parts, you know, that thing. Um, so we'll do square root, square root. That leaves me with an x minus 3 equals plus or minus 5. So now I can split them into a positive 5 and a negative 5. And I ran out of space, and I don't care, because it's time for me to go home. But it's time for you to still be in class and learn math. So there you go. Ha! X equals 8, X equals negative 2. So we're just doing the entire process. Don't do number 8. Don't do number 8. If you haven't been watching the video and you're cheating by not watching the video and you're probably going to try and do number 8 and you're going to raise your hand and be like, Mr. Ellis, how do we do number 8? And be like, you didn't watch the video, did you? Because don't do number 8 because um, it's weird. So just do those three. So you should be doing one through seven on that worksheet, and you probably already finished it while I was talking, and that's awesome. If not, go ahead, work on it, finish it. If you have questions for me, let me know. When you do finish it, the follow-up to that, the last thing that we're going to work on is um, it's like a little Harry Potter murder mystery thing, which is pretty similar to stuff that we've done before. Uh, I don't know if you can even see these things. Yeah. So I'll have these cut out. You'll grab a stack. And all you have to do is solve the problems. It has the answers there, and you'll um, write it down on your own piece of paper, I guess. So get your own piece of paper and do these. There are eight different sets. Um, you only have to do two sets, and I don't care which ones they are. So just pick two sets, just two, not all eight, just two, right? Just two. Not all eight. If you start doing all eight, that means you didn't listen to my video and I'll be mad at you. Just two of these. Do them on your own piece of paper. Eight problems total, all completing the square. If you need help, let me know. Deuces.